Thank you. Hi, Facebook. Can you guys hear me okay? We're just getting hooked up. Hello, good morning over to Periscope. Not sure if I want my hair back or down. Can you grab me a hair elastic? Yeah. Hi, Ashley. Happy one day before your birthday. Thank you, Jill. Awesome. Thanks. This lighting is something right now. Something a little ghostly. Hello, Manon, Jen, Rachel, Sarah, Francine. Good morning. Give us a shout out. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm going to try to fix. There we go. That's a little better. I've got to turn this desk around. <laughs> Good morning, Keely. Bear with us. All right, we're gonna have to go this way. There we go, that's better. I know. Lift Sorry. it. Sorry. Mr. Holfitt's giving me the eye. The mister. Plaid Wednesday is right. Look at us all oh, dialed in. I didn't even realize that. That's so <laughs> We haven't had time to actually oh. coordinate our outfits for today, and I've got a little too much blush bronzer going on. Let's fix that. The light keeps following us into this. Okay. Oh my gosh, get it together, people. There we go. Well, oh. the lighting is not good right now. The sun is, is beaming in. What's the, what's the lesson here? What's the one lesson we can learn from this? Mm. Scrambling around like this at five minutes after 12. The lesson for me is I, I kind of feel like this broadcast needs to be at 2 o'clock. No, that's no? not the lesson. All right. Give us the lesson, Chris. The lesson is get up early in the morning, get everything you need to get done before you broadcast and give yourself at least an hour to prepare for this, okay. not doing it at 12.05. Yeah, I'll take that. The me, the me of a couple of years ago might go into the list of 100 things I've already done this morning, but... But we'll leave am it. I right, we'll audience? <laughs> but, but the audience has also done 100 things, and they're here on time. You're right, you're right. Right? Okay. I everyone give, said thanks, everyone give me emoji thumbs up if you agree with me. Careful. I'm waiting. I'm watching. Okay. When are we coming to visit the Canary Islands? Question number one. It's not on our radar right now, but maybe you've planted a seed. Okay, let's get started, shall we? So welcome, if you're here for the first time, tuning in live especially, say hello. We wanna see who we've got on. We can see your comments. Um, good morning, good morning. Tuning in from all over, this is great. Thanks, Christine. <laughs> okay, so we're doing Q&A day, and if you're brand new to this show, we, we pop on, uh, sometimes I'm on my own, sometimes Chris joins, and uh, we do a weekly broadcast. Uh, most weeks, this is Q&A, chance for you to, to talk and jam with us on topics within health, within leadership, within business. If you're business owners, you'll take a lot from this weekly broadcast. And uh, today we are doing a Q&A day, so I'll have my assistant pop up the link if you'd like to add your question or a topic suggestion to a future show. Um, you can add it to the doc, and so today we're taking about five or six questions. But um, before we get started, let's open up. I've got a few things I wanted to go through. There was a funny Instagram that came in this morning from The Essential Runner. She said, uh, hi, I just listened to one of your recent podcasts, and I wondered if you planned to do any more, where Chris says balls a lot. <laughs> You can't, oh, yeah, I don't want to segue that stuff in. It's, it's a once in a while type thing. Only on the days where he's just come off of his shift at the fire hall yeah, will you be treated to that kind of language. <laughs> so you're in really good lighting. I look like very ghostly right now. It's the way she goes. Okay. So last week, I um, had the pleasure of hanging out with some of you that I know are on live. The um, all of the diamond and above leaders in Canada where we live, and uh, it was an awesome one and a half days together. And uh, it was really it was really cool to be in a room with people who within Canada have been at the center of the ripple effect that we're seeing with 
within um, doTERRA and the natural health world. These are, these are some of the very first leaders to have emerged in our beautiful country to provide access to the purest essential oils in the world. Hi, Lindsay. Yeah, so some of you are on right now, and it was such a great day to be together. And I was honored to, to be asked to open up the day, and my, my topic with this group was what it really means to be a leader today. Because leadership is changing, you know, years ago being a leader was kind of, it was a title, it was a rank, it was, um, it was kind of confused with being a manager. You know, managers are people who are in a role that we are, are somewhat forced to, to follow, I guess, whereas being a leader is really about inspiring people around a movement and around a vision. And, um, it's revolutionary what we're seeing today. You know, people join somebody in a leadership position because of why they do what they do, not necessarily the what of what they do. And, and if you are familiar with Simon Sinek, he wrote a book called Start With Why, which cracks open into this idea that um, anybody, anybody can be a leader. Um, it's just that not everybody is, right? There are a lot of people in positions that are uninspiring um, and you know, I'm sure we can all think of people or experiences in our life when, when we've been around somebody who very much knew their title and they made sure that everybody knew their title, right? Um, and Chris was supposed to join me for this week. Our, our plans changed a little bit um, because of family priorities, so he had to stay back. But uh, you, had a, you had a great talk planned just on leadership, even within the fire department and how um, that is one of those areas um, where you really, you know, you need to be able to trust who you're working with because lives are on the line. And is there anything right. you want to share that was on your heart you were going to share that day? No, I think we just kind of carry on right now. And, and uh, I can jump in to when. Yeah. I wasn't prepared to open up, up the podcast, so. I like to throw you off. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, on Facebook, I'm going to share some of the um, points that I talked about during my talk. I'll share those on Facebook and just expand a little bit more on this topic because it's my favorite thing to talk about. It really is. And, and for those of you that are parents, I really, uh, I, I really acknowledge that being a parent is, is really the ultimate um, honor. It's the ultimate leadership position. And if you happen to be a parent and a leader at the same time, um, you probably notice there's a lot of those parallels, right? And I actually, I talked about that last night on, on my personal Facebook page, but I'll, I'll share some of the things that were on my heart that we talked about, but it's been a really crazy time. Um, wow. I know a lot of you are building doTERRA as a business right now, and you probably saw very similar growth patterns within your own business in November. Um, within our team, we, for the first time ever, put over $3 million worth of essential oils into homes in just one month. It was a, hmm. it was a crazy month, record-breaking, really, and we saw so much growth happen. We welcomed almost 5,000 new homes to our community that are now um, starting a journey of their own, starting to make different decisions, more empowered decisions, to have access to the tools that they need in order to make the best decision for themselves and their family, and it's really incredible what's happening. And um, I, on Monday, yeah, Monday of this week, most months I lead a mentor session with all of the brand new people on our team that have hit kind of the first leadership rank in doTERRA. It's called elite. Tap the screen if you're, if you are or have been an elite leader. Um, it's, it's the first time you're like, okay, you know what? I love my oils. I'm sharing them with other people. I want to look at how I can actually start to work on one of the main pieces of our total health picture, which is financial wellness and living our purpose. Very important to, to living a fulfilling life, right? And, and having greater impact. So a lot of people, once they hit elite, they tap into this. And so um, as I was in the shower this morning, preparing you know, and, and kind of running through the call in my mind, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna share a recording with you guys. I'm gonna share that uh, call that I did with all of our brand new elites this past month. Um, we'll, we'll share that in the show notes, okay, when this goes onto um, iTunes as a podcast, and it'll also be on the wholefit.com, uh, wholefit website. But it'll be good for you that any of you that are in a leadership position with your team, you'll get a, a little bit of a taste of how I, I lead. And um, we went deep really fast, so 
I think you'll love it. Two more things. Number one, see this beauty? This is a new Rocking Vibe collaboration. Um, it's the new Whole Fit Legacy piece. It's going live on Friday. So it will be available in time if you uh, want to order it as a gift for, for leaders on your team or for yourself. And part of the inspiration behind this piece, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little edgy. It uses Moonstone as the main stone, which you can see is just beautiful. I love the prism effect of it. But I love it because it's a very solid piece and it looks good with uh, when you come home with a new flannel shirt, <laughs> which is like every week for me. Or if you are... Um, Can you drop oils on it? Yes, I'll show you that in a second. Okay. It also works if you're on the stage. You know, I love to wear it with like a tank top and a blazer if I'm sharing my heart on a stage. So this is launching on Friday and for my aromatic community, there's a lava bead on the back for you to drop your your highest vibration essential oils. Rose would be one of my top picks for leaders. So uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was in doTERRA land, if you've been considering getting started with essential oils, this was actually the month um, four years ago that I personally enrolled because there is a promo for everyone who gets started with either um, a home essentials kit or above, for example, or if you create your own 200 volume order, you're gonna get a free 15 mil bottle of the king of oils known as frankincense. So that actually prompted me into action four years ago because um, I knew at the time that frankincense is one of the most coveted essential oils. It's the most researched essential oils and, of essential oils and it goes back the farthest in, um, in history, in books. You know, if you're familiar with the Bible at all, they talk about frankincense and myrrh. Um, I think frankincense is, is I, I can't remember the exact number. It, it's, it's talked about many times within the Bible. And, and this, of course, would have been the resin of, of frankincense, not the essential oil. Um, but it, it's been very, it's been honored throughout centuries as one of the most supportive essential oils for the body. And you get it free. Um, and every home that purchases up to 200 volume this month, they can do it four times and get and receive four frankincense bottles. So I want to make sure you guys knew about that. Um, and if, like I've mentioned before, just connect with the person that's been guiding you up to this point with oils to get started. And if that person's me, then you can hop over to my website and I'll help you get started as well. Alrighty, Chris. Did you look at the questions for today? I didn't. So we've got some good ones. Um, the first one, I'm gonna probably take on my own since it's health related, unless you have anything you wanna chime in regarding coconut oil. I need to get a coffee. You're gonna get a coffee, okay, go for it. I might stand up and adjust this light a little bit, but um, for those of you that are here live, we will we'll take a look through some of the questions you're posting as well on Q&A day, so feel free to comment or add your thoughts as we go. This first question um, came in a couple weeks ago. The question was, can you uncrack the debate over whether coconut oil use is healthy or unhealthy, topically and internally? Lots of debate within the American Heart Association, known as the AHA, customers bringing up this question quite a bit. So first of all, coconut oil topically is brilliant. If you have ever had any type of skin Concern you, um, especially with, with young skin or elderly skin, then you likely know that coconut oil is incredible, right? Very nourishing for your skin. It's a natural um, plant lipid, so it's, it's, it's quite healing, quite protective. Um, now let's talk about internal. So I will link up in the show notes a great article. I mean, there's been a lot of experts who've come out to speak on this topic because it kind of, made waves, right? When the AHA came out back, I don't know when this was, I feel like it was late in the summer. Um, they took a stance that basically coconut oil um, is not and has never been healthy for you. Almost like a, we told you so, you know, back in the eighties when we started promoting this lie that health, that fat is, is dangerous for you. It was like their chance to say, we told you so. And, you know, and it caused a lot of waves. Okay. And, I'm going to link up some, some articles for you to read on this topic. But the first thing you need to know, there has not been a single study showing that coconut oil causes heart disease. And this would be the American Heart Association's main concern would be, you know, what are the lifestyles out there that are actually causing heart disease? So there's not been a single study that has ever linked coconut oil causing heart disease. Now, 
I mentioned already that the AHA has been doling out bad advice for a long time, okay? Um, you know, back, I think that was the most dangerous thing that ever started was the, <clears throat> the notion that fats, healthy fats were actually dangerous for you. So they told us to eat a very low fat, low cholesterol diet and eat tons of starchy carbs, right? And by the way, something you need to understand about the AHA, they get huge funding by the pharmaceutical industry and by big food giants, especially the big food giants that are, are basically stocking the grocery store shelves with um, very high sugar cereals, the very food products that are contributing to very high rates of um, diabetes, heart disease, and, and all other chronic diseases um, that are linked to our diet. So this is, it, it will make your head spin to try to understand this, but I wanna leave you with one simple thing. The best diet is always going to be one which focuses on whole foods, less packaged foods, real foods, not margarine and fake man-made oils like the AHA is promoting. That doesn't sound accurate, does it? Like that does not sound like a good call, what the AHA is actually advising. When you focus on whole foods, less things out of a package, fruits, you know, produce, vegetables, with that type of a focus, Adding healthy fats like coconut oil is brilliant, okay? Coconut oil is going to help um, the fat-soluble vitamins in your produce actually absorb. So we're talking vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, very essential vitamins. Do not absorb from your food if you don't have a healthy fat source. Now, I personally thrive on higher fats. My diet is, is about 60% fat, okay? I do very well on a high-fat, high-protein diet. Now, this, this can be tricky to do, and many of you know that I have been doing bulletproof mornings for about the last four years. Not for everybody, but for me, it works really well. So I actually don't have any protein or carbohydrates until about one o'clock every day. In the morning, I use um, an organic coffee as my carrier to get the healthy fats in. So I will add um, grass-fed pasture butter or ghee, I do about two, well, one, one good tablespoon of that and then one tablespoon of um, either coconut oil or there's an oil that Bulletproof brand makes called Brain Octane. I feel incredible and I've been doing this for four years and some people have said to me, well, isn't that dangerous that you're not getting you know, food for breakfast? But this is a form of putting my body into a, st a form of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, if you look that up, um, there's a lot of research happening on right, on that right now where you actually put your body into a fasted state for like 12 to 16 hours. So you don't eat past, you know, 8 o'clock at night and then you don't eat again until sometimes noon the next day. And it's it's actually quite, quite helpful and healthy for the body to not be given a steady supply of sugars, whether that's bread or muffins or whatever. It, it's allowing your body to tap into the, its glycogen stores. So all that to say, healthy fats, I thrive on that. I know a lot of you are probably um, playing around with that idea. You're noticing that if you have more healthy fats in your diet, you're not craving the sugars, right? You're not craving the carbohydrates. Um, yeah, it's great if you're not a breakfast person. To act, You don't, you know, <laughs> back when we were growing up, breakfast was the most important meal of the day, right? It was, there was such a focus on that. But Hasn't really led us down the right path, has it? You know, because a lot of people start off their day with, you know, a muffin on the go or toast, and it, it just, you're, you're craving sugar and carbs all day long. But here's the last thing I want to leave you with. Knowing all of that, one thing that you'll find interesting, okay? The president of the American Heart Association just recently had a heart attack at the American Heart Association's meeting live right there, had a heart attack. The very man responsible and looking after the advice that his organization is doling out actually had a heart attack right at their meeting. Like look at, you can look it up, like at CNN, wherever, go, go wherever you want, you'll find this, this uh, newsflash. And that, that in and of itself just shows you that He's probably looking at, well, what kind of advice are we giving? If he's been following his own advice for years, that could you know, very likely have led to his own heart attack. So you've got to look at everything that's coming out today. There's a lot of fake news out there. There's a lot of um, 
journalists who are looking to make a name from, for themselves, where they're they're looking for sensational um, articles to grab onto. And you have to take a moment and, and just think, you know, well, how does this land? How does this, or, or try it for yourself. Be a student of your own body. If If you are somebody who's really struggling with an addiction to sugar, then you need to look at your fats because that's going to help you not crave that. And sugar is sugar is the problem. Sugar is very hard to control and and avoid. Dana said he's only in his forties. I didn't even uh, I didn't even catch that stat. That's interesting. So he had a heart attack in his forties. The president of the AHA. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say about that article. Uh, really, it's a chance for us all to realize we you have to you have to check your sources and. Ultimately, what this makes me think of is pay attention to the people giving advice in any area that are an example of what they're teaching. So, you know, you've heard before, don't trust a skinny chef. Don't take advice from an obese doctor. There's, you know, and this, this comes back to leadership as well. Pay attention to the people who are actually living what they talk about. It is the most important thing in everything, really. Um, Bulletproof coffee, yes, Katie, it would break that fast because it's fats, right? But I'm not having any um, protein unless I'm adding collagen. Sometimes I'll do that. Um, but personally, I feel the best when I do that. And then I, I do kind of a burst workout at noon, whether that's going for a run and incorporating some sprints or doing some, you know, rowing with some weight training or something. And then I have protein and carbs, because it's like my body's like a sponge at that point, ready to take it in. All righty, let's go into a leadership question. So this one's for you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it says, hey, Chris and Ange, thank you so much for all you do. We greatly appreciate that you share and inspire on a regular basis. Thank you. Uh, my questions are primarily geared towards Chris, but Ange, I'd love to hear your perspective as well. What are specific ways you help Ange in the family business? How do you determine uh, that you wanted to continue working as a firefighter when you no longer needed to? And what do you do from nine to three when you're not at the fire station? How do you and Ange schedule life together? How do you determine priorities? And what, there's a lot of questions in this question. Uh, what advice do you have for husbands whose wives have built doTERRA to a point where their job, the husband's, is no longer necessary. Let's start with that. Okay. Yeah. So bear with me here. I'm going to put this in front of me and read it. And read it. I have to read it. So um, you want to start with number five. What advice do you have for husbands whose wives have built doTERRA to a point where their job is no longer necessary? Okay. So that's a question I always get all the time. Yeah. Especially when we're outside of, obviously, when we're at different doTERRA events and everything else. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't have advice for husbands whose wives have built Oterra to where they want, they no longer need to work because I've never been in that position. Um, I can't give anyone that. Sort well, you are in that position. Well, no, I am in that position. You're right. But I've never wanted to leave my job. So uh, for, for me to give out advice for someone else, on how to act or how to, how to be, I can't, I can't really do that. Um, again, I'm in a different position where I completely love my job. I completely love the guys I work with and I completely love the, the work that I do. Um, to be honest with you, if I was getting minimum wage, I would still do this job because I, I just love, I love everything about it. Um, I love what it stands for. I love, like I said, the, the, the teamwork aspect of it, how much I get out of it. And it's so, it's such a rewarding job. Not, not as a, as a, as a, it's a humbling job is what it is. And it teaches you lessons outside of actually just the actual calls and everything else like that. So, um, you know what, there, there'd actually be a time when I'd like to do this where I actually get questions live because this has always hey, well. been, yeah, this has always been a, um, a question that that's always come up. I don't, so sorry guys, I don't have any advice for any husbands that uh, uh, their job is no longer necessary. I can't honestly answer that question because I've never been in that position. Everything else I can, I can, I have a very good idea of, of an understanding what to talk about. Um, specific ways you help Angie in, in your family business? Well, 
my biggest thing is I like to just be here for her. I say, what do you need? And that Ange takes that to be um, basically a, a blank whiteboard of she can just write down or tell me whatever she needs. What do you need today? Like, the, the, you know, this afternoon uh, before we got on here, you got out of the shower and you just yelled, do, you know, can you make me a, a smoothie? Like that, that to me is, is just the helping out. Um, if you're a husband and you're listening to this or you want to know and your wife's at this point, the easiest thing for you guys to do, I'll let you in on a secret, is just say that. Ask those three words. What do you need? Or what do you want? And that's the best way to do things. I do, I, you know, I do trips to the mail, get the car service, whatever, anything like that. Um, there's no real, right? Would you agree? Like there's no real. Mm-hmm. I'm just writing down some thoughts. Okay. All right. Um, how did you determine you want to continue working when you lo- no longer needed to? I think I just kind of answered that question. Um, you know, again, I was, I was always been lucky enough that from day one, I love my job. I've never had to walk into some place and be like, you know, destroyed that I got to spend another eight hours and nine hours here or, or go into my cubicle and have to worry about the guy beside me who's a pain in the ass or whatever like that. So I've never had to worry about that. Um, again, I, I what you sorry. just what you just said there though is the is the point. So I want you to picture yourself working in a cubicle in a job that you hate. I'd be gone. Exactly. Yeah. So you actually do have advice for husbands. The and the word I wrote down is fulfillment. This is this is what this whole thing is all about. So the yeah. goal was never to achieve a certain level of income so that you could leave your job. No. The goal is how can we both do what we are totally fulfilled by and most passionate about and stop all the other stuff, right? This, that, that is the, now a lot of, a lot of men may not be in your position. Yeah. And I understand that. And I, and I kind of, I have to apologize because when I read, when I first read this question, I, I took it as it, um, this person was asking me personally. And when you, when you brought that up, you're right. So, I mean, I'll, I'll hit it again. Um, it, if, if you're a husband and you're happy with your job and you like to go into work and you like the people you work with, I'm telling you right now, guys, don't quit your job. Just keep doing it. Whether, you know, and if you've reached the point of your life where you think, well, I don't need the money or it's one of these things, don't really think twice about doing it because if you're happy where you are and you like the routine of going into work and you like the people you work with and you like the job that you do and you feel fulfilled and you feel it's a job that, you know, you've worked this hard to get to and everything else, don't quit. Don't quit just to say I'm retired now at 35 or 40 or whatever you are, because you know what, you know, it's, it's personally, again, this is just me talking it's not a good look. Just if you're happy, stay where you're at, keep doing it. And, you know, it may be a badge of honor to say to someone, well, I'm retired. And, well, geez, you're only 35. But, like, I, I don't know. I've never. Is I've, that the goal? Is like, that the goal to be retired? What does retirement mean at 35 or 30 or, or whoever mm-hmm. old you are? What, what does it mean? Mm-hmm. You know, to me, it means, oh, does that mean now I have to grow a ponytail and drive a Corvette? At 31 or 32? No, it doesn't. But Don't even get them started. You know, no, yeah. exactly. But if you're someone, on the flip side of that, if you're someone that hates his job and, and everything else, then, yeah, then do it. I, I completely agree that, like, if you can't stand going to work, can't stand your job and everything, and it never feels like you're fulfilled or you're getting anything out of it, then I 100% agree. Then leave your job. and and, and But at the same time, leave your job – with the realization that, you know, you have to keep looking forward. You're not just going to sit on your laurels and go, well, now I work for my wife because mm-hmm. you don't know when this is going to end and you don't know what, what's going to come down the road. So it's good to have some security for yourself and, and, and everything else. And that's not where I'm coming from. Again, I've told you before, that's not where I'm coming from. Uh, I, cause I love everything I do. I told you that before, but if you're someone that hates it and can't stand it, then do it. But don't rest on your laurels of, all right, I'm done on Friday, on Monday, I'm retired. Because 
it's not, it's not sustainable guys. And you're going to find that down the road. It's not sustainable at all. Can I, something that's on my heart with this topic. Um, if together this will be even better, then it might make sense to do that at a certain point. Um, I have, you know, leaders on my team who they, they do this a little bit too early. Okay. They, they might, you know, they might hit silver rank and all of a sudden they're, they're blasting on social media that they've just retired their husband and he's come home and, and now they're going to do this together. That might be a little bit too early when you're at around the rank of like platinum or diamond and your team is growing like crazy and you, and you can feel that together this is going to grow and be even better. Um, and you both realize that you have something you can bring to the business, to the team and divide and conquer. Um, it makes sense. If your husband or your wife is feeling like they're, they're dying a little bit in the work they're currently doing. doTERRA as a business opportunity is incredibly fulfilling. And if both of you can find your place here, um, in the work that you want to do, then that's fantastic. But don't don't make that change too fast. You'll know when it's time. Here's what I want to really just clarify, though. Women, don't make the assumption that your husband should quit his job and come home and be a babysitter yeah. and a postman. Yeah. Taking your pack. I mean, Chris has helped me in a lot of those areas at times, but that wasn't the permanent plan. No, and that's something that I've always done, anyways, because I've had that time. Yeah, I mean, you just some I don't days even look, are crazy, yeah. and it's like, hey, babe, can you go take these twenty packages to the post office for me? Or, hey, can you take the kids to a movie this afternoon? Because I need like you know two hours of like real good focus time. We have days like that for sure. But we're unique in that. That would have been done anyway. So I, but I love what you're saying about that. Like, if you're going to retire your husband, then you better be a hundred percent sure that your husband's going to be a hundred percent into what you're doing. Yeah, like because have those important conversations. Because, what fulfills you? Yeah, to do exactly. This work, right? And and that's a sort of to piggyback on that. I get that. I get another that question all the time. Is if you're asking, if you're asking me that question of like when I see all these people of <clears throat> how do I get my husband involved in it and how do I get him to, to love it and everything else. Uh, that's a question that you shouldn't be answering me. That's a, that's a, uh, a question that you should be talking out together and communicating together as mm -hmm. a, like there is nothing that a, myself or anyone else can tell you as a, as a woman or as a, as a wife, how to get my husband on board to this. Like, you have to be completely open and honest with them uh, and show them where you're going to go and what your vision is and everything else like that. There's no, there's no blueprint for this. And going back to what you said, when you better, like if you're going to do this, you better be in it like a hundred percent together because there's going to be some days where there's a lull in the action and you guys are sitting there looking at each other. And I guarantee you, it's just human nature from men and women married for however long you're going to start feeling a little bit antsy and a little bit resentful. It's like, well, why aren't you outside? Well, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Oh, and right? trust us. We've had a lot of yeah, conversations. Yeah, exactly. We've had these where conversations. the scale feels uneven. Yeah, like right? I, I always go back to that one point, like when, when you first started out. Like I'm not going to lie. There was times when I said it and I was thinking it, and I'm like, well, geez, <laughs> it's Wednesday night, and this is your third night out already teaching mm -hmm. a class, right? So, but I mean – you know, that's, I'm only telling you people this because like, don't get this vision that we never went through any of the uh, ups and downs and everything else like that because we did, but be prepared to do it. But go, be prepared to do when you do go through it to not to quit and be like, well, I'm out. I'm not going to do this because we're fighting too much or whatever like that. But just have the conversation ahead of time because trust me, guys, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road. Well, and I think that if this is something that you're, you're feeling heavy about in your home, first of all, go back and listen to the episode I did about a month ago called It Takes a Village to Raise a Vision because there's different stages your business will go through. And as the leader of your business, it's important that you, you are always looking at, you know, where now does it make sense for me to ask for help or pay for help, right? There's different layers to this. But like I said, the, the, 
the plan all along was never to just have Chris quit his job or no. with the time that he does have available to have him just being my errand boy. No. Um, one of my visions for this year, you guys, was for us to grow deeper in our own relationship and for me to involve him in his gifts of his insights and leadership and mentoring. I, I, I wanted to bring him into this piece of my business because I knew that he had a lot to add value to, which is why he's on the broadcast with me now. I've been doing this for a long time online and I wanted, I wanted to hit a couple of buckets through the, through the decision for us to do this show together. It grows our own relationship. We, you know, even last night we went out for dinner together and we're talking about today and we're talking about the questions that came up. We're talking about you and, and just how we can add value and it adds value to our relationship to do that. Um, so for me, that was like a yes for this year. And I, and, but what was important there is I wanted to make sure he understood what I see as a gift in him was the, the value he could add to this conversation through mentoring. That is a piece of my business. It's a huge part of my business is doing something once that impacts thousands, right? This is, this is what the show is for me. It's a chance for me to, to take an hour and impact many lives. And so this is a great thing that we do together. This, this really is the only thing Chris is involved in, in, in my doTERRA business, yeah, to be right. honest, because I recognize that, Hey, I'm a strategist. It's my top skill. We did the strengths finder last week. My top skill is strategy. So I'm, I'm very smart with the strategy of my business, with the back office, with numbers, with placements, with, with, you know, growing and knowing my business. I, I'm very skilled in that area. It's not something that interests him at all. So guess what? He doesn't even know the password to my back office. No. Okay. Now there's a lot of men on our team, their wives began this and that is what they love. They love the numbers. Maybe they've been in marketing before. That's not Chris's no. interest or skill. So I could break a wall down. Totally. He's really good at knowing what's an emergency and what's not. Yeah. Right. So sometimes if, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, um, the littlest thing can just be like the straw that broke the camel's back for me sometimes. Right. And he's great at just saying, you know what? Not, not a big deal because he's used to like the 911 situation. So the, the most beautiful thing about this is, is whether you're married or not, the people in your life get to know their gifts, get to know what actually excites them because there is a place for that in your business. Um, but what I see in doTERRA can be very damaging is all of a sudden, you know, a really common scenario is, the, the husband or the, or the man of the house has been the main breadwinner for a long time. And then the wife, because doTERRA attracts a lot of women to the work that we do because for a lot of reasons, um, that's a whole other topic, but all of a sudden the wife or the mother of the home comes into doTERRA and starts growing big and fast. And all of a sudden the husband realizes, well, what's my role now? Because what I used to feel I provided for our home isn't as needed, I guess, right? Financially. So yeah. it really becomes a conversation of, Hey, is what we're doing lighting us both up? And if it's not, this is what this business gives you the opportunity to change. And I'll tell you another thing. Um, you know, you have to be very careful because again, I never, I don't want to keep pumping my own tires here, but I never had a problem with this. But like Ann said, if the women start bringing in a little bit more of the income and they become the main breadwinner, like just be very careful because there's a lot of ego in that. And guys, you know, generally we don't like that feeling of, of uh, not being the one. And, and a lot of guys would feel, what would the word be intimidated or, or mm -hmm. feel slighted or lessened about that. So have you ever, have you ever I felt never, that way? I never have, to be honest with you. And again, that's not just I've me. never felt that from you. No. Like, I've always felt like it was all green lights. Well, the like, thing is, is too, like, you got to remember that I come from a background of, like, teamwork, 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 you know, whoever did the, it doesn't matter if you did the biggest thing or you just did the smallest little bit, everything that you do comes together, right? And it sounds so cliche and everything, but no, I've never, ever felt that. And I don't. I don't know, I, I, but I've never had that sort of gene in my body anyways. You know, I always mm -hmm. just thought, like, if you're going to contribute to something big that you want big, no matter what the role is of that person, big or small, 
then that's everyone plays a bit contributes to it. So no, I never, I've never, I've never, it never even crossed my mind. But again, just in talking with people outside of here, you know, being around and, and, and talking to people, like I get that vibe sometimes from people that it's like, you know, it, my husband's a little bit, you know, weary because now I become the one he doesn't know his role and everything else like that. So and this is, you know, what I, what I automatically think of here is let this business bring out the best in you so that what happens in your home is love is, yeah. is an honoring of, you know, how it's helping heal you in many ways and how it's helping the whole family. Because what you're up against there is somebody who is also feeling insecure and so the more that you can love on them and let this business change your heart in the best way it's going to eventually impact your whole family your community outwards right so trust and just to add to that again i'm not very uh i'm not very active on social media but i do find that after these these um podcasts there's a lot of questions um, but if you're, if you're someone that watches this, you can find me on Facebook and, and send me the question. I love to answer those questions. I really do. And I'll, I'll definitely get back to you. Like it, it specific, I mean, obviously specifically between, you know, with husbands and, and men and, you know, the people in your life, like I, well, what, what would be your advice to any, any husband, well, boyfriend, man listening? You know what, to be honest with you, it's, it's so varied. Like I get so many different varied questions that they're not really all the same but like if you guys have a question you can hit me up there on facebook and oh i can't believe i just said that you can hit me up on facebook but but find me on there and um there's some on right now yeah well what, just, what's your advice to them well i don't know what, what would a question be like what if there's, someone's got a question okay I'll, I'll tell you right now what every man is thinking this isn't for real Calm down, wife. I know this seems exciting right now, but this is probably going to go away. Um, get a grip. All like, right. Okay. Well, first of all, I, I always say this to people, to, to women. Uh, are you are you 100% into this? Are you going to do this? Is this what you want to do? And be honest with yourself. And if you waver a little bit, you probably – don't want to pursue this as a, as a full-time gig or, or whatever like that. But like, how are you all in? I always say, that. are you all in? And if they're like, yep. Okay. Then let's proceed to part two of this. You have to sit down with your husband or your spouse or whoever you're with your partner and tell them this, this is what I'm doing. This is my goal. This is what we're going to do. And this is where I want to be. You have to have that conversation. And if you don't have that conversation, then you're only going at this 50%. You're, you got one foot in, one foot out. Um, speak, to, speak to the reason you know that they're doubting you, okay? Well, uh, one of the key things is I think a reason somebody wouldn't have the level of belief in you that you wish they did is because at some point you've taught them not to. Because you've quit too soon or you've hopped around. You know, you, we, we teach people through our actions, whether to take us for real or not. It's the whole like crying wolf thing, right? So sometimes what happens in a home is, it's like, what, what will it be this year? Or what are you gonna hop to now? And that might be the thinking. Or if you're not, it, it, and you're right, like that's totally it because people do hop around. But if you're just someone who's just starting out, you've never done that, you've never shown those tendencies to jump around like that. Again, part two is have a conversation, be honest with each other. Tell them what you want to do. This is your goal. I want you to be part of it. This is what I need to do. Part three of that, I would always say, is to make sure that you don't compare yourself to other people. Don't say, well, this girl did it in two years, and this girl mm -hmm. did it in four years. and Because you are going to start. That, that's, a, that's a terrible place to start because you don't know what that person did two years ago or this person was doing four years ago or whatever like that. Be your own person, be your own brand, and do this yourself. Do this for yourself. Have, have um, you know, you want to have the ability to do this for yourself. Don't start comparing yourself to everything else because you're going to start comparing yourself, and hopefully things go well for you right off the beginning. Be like, well, geez, I, I made a leap. That girl made a leap. 
if you hit a bump in the road somewhere and you're not where that person was, where you are now, then that's going to be very discouraging to you. So always go in with an open mind of this is my, this is my business plan. This is my role. This is what I'm going to do. And this is where I'm going to be. Do not compare yourself to anyone else. Please don't do that. That's the worst thing you could do. Stay off. And if you're going to go at this business 100%, stay off all the social media and only use it for good. The minute you start thinking, oh, geez, I need to do this or I need to switch up the game plan of what I have because so-and-so is doing this, check yourself. Turn off your phone. Turn off your computer. Take a deep breath and just keep following the, the path that you yeah, why your path? Just keep following your path. You know, there's a reason that doTERRA has a whole magazine about leadership, though. Like, there's a, there's a reason that we want, we want to know what is possible. So when it comes to the comparison thing, for some of you, uh, like Jenny wrote, her boyfriend's scared that her whole life will be run by this. Well, my opinion on that is when you really believe in something, your whole life will be affected by it. But it doesn't have to be the only thing you ever do or talk about. But if you're asking, sorry, if you, I, I, it just goes back to my point. It, pro it proves it. Like if you're talking about that, he's worried about it's going to run my whole life. Then Jenny, that's on you. You need to have that conversation right now. You shouldn't be bringing that up in this form right here, because clearly if you're bringing that up, you haven't had that conversation hundred percent with him. Well, she's sharing because she knows a lot of people are probably struggling with it too. No, but, and it's not against, it's not. No, no, no. But it's that, that is a really common thing. And this is why I say like, speak into the, tr speak the truth into, you know, what, what's the big elephant in the room in your home? What's the big fear? And if, and that's great that you know that that's what he's worried about. You've obviously had conversations yeah. about that. So, I don't, and sometimes be real, like, you know what? You're right. Likely for the next year, um, I want to give my all to this because I believe in it. I believe in the work I'm doing. We mm -hmm. have those talks and I've told you guys this before. As beautiful as he is, he wasn't always on board with everything. Okay? No, no. I, as great as this all sounds, there have been, there have been those days, those early days where I've had to say, you know, please, I need you just to trust that what I yeah. Uh, no, is the right next move is the right next move. And be pre sorry, sorry. And be prepared, guys, to get. I always like to say, like, be prepared to get dirty. Like, you're gonna have your, you're gonna have your scraps. You're gonna have your fights. You're gonna have your little disagreements. You're gonna go in one room and not talk for the rest of the night and everything else. Be prepared for that because it's gonna happen. But don't quit. Don't quit. Just realize that all that stuff, those little bumps, those little bruises, those little scrapes those dirty little nights and everything else like that, they're going to happen, you know? Now, I want to speak to the leaders of teams right now because a very important piece is that you can go to the people in your family, the people you're needing support from, so that they can get a sense for the leadership happening above you. Um, so if you're on my team, for example, absolutely, like share, share our life with your husband, with yeah. your wife, with whoever, so they can get a sense for, well, what are the... What are people like in this business that have accomplished and, and been successful? You can go right to the very top of doTERRA where they model this, the, the integrity of the very owners of doTERRA. Their hearts are so beautiful. They are, the, the, they are servant leaders right at the very top. And what they've created, everything that's been attracted into doTERRA started with them. And so A, like you're going to be that leader for your team. But help people around you build belief in what you're doing by letting them know, hey, this is a this is a diamond leader or this is a presidential diamond leader in doTERRA that I really admire. Share leaders with people so they get a sense for like, this is what this is really about. This is what's possible. And this is the caliber of the leaders um, we, that have done well. We try to emphasize to you guys, too, especially when we're doing these. And I felt a lot better about doing these as well. We try to emphasize to you guys that, you know, this goes back to my point of don't compare yourself to other people. Like, we are as real as it gets when it comes to, to this. Like, we've done all the work. We've done the ups and downs and everything else like that. Like, when everyone sees Ange on social media and stuff like that, like, it's, it's great. But we're letting you know that th this hasn't been an easy road and nothing about this has been easy. And... You know, I, I just kind of jog my memory right here, but there was a time when 
uh, we were coming back, we were in an airport and I, I just thought it was so funny because everything was, it was a doTERRA van. Everything was great and everyone was having a good time and it was time to come home. And I had someone ask me, Oh, you're, you're retired now, aren't you? And I just kind of chuckled because I thought to myself, you know, this is a great world and everything else. And everyone has this, I, this idea of Angie and I being these people who are way up here. And I kind of laughed with myself because he says, well, you're not, you know, you're retired now. You're retired from your job, young guy, everything else. And the funniest thing was I laughed because the next day at 3.30 in the morning, I found myself with my buddies at work coming out of the greasiest, dirtiest basement fire, covered in dirt and soot and blowing mm -hmm. out smoke from my nose for the next week and thought, yeah, well, this isn't the exact glamorous life that people like to think of us having, right? And that's what I mean. It's you have to be able to do the dirty part of the work of, of this and be prepared for the bad moments and everything else. It's not glitz and glam. And if anyone's telling you that this is it, that it, that it is like, Every single day is like better than the last. It's not. It's a struggle. Just be be prepared to put the work in and grind it out, no matter what level you're at. However, it won't feel like a grind if you're doing work that lights you up. I'll tell you that. There are weeks I put 60 hours into my business. Um, I make I make people on my own team feel uncomfortable that think this is all about them getting to a certain level and putting their feet up. Okay, because I. I absolutely love, love, love this work. And so does Chris loves his own work as well. He's willing to go in and get, you know, get filthy with it and get soot covered, you know, all over and be breathing that, you know, he's willing to do it because he loves what he does. So that is the point. So we have like five minutes left and there's always a question that ends up dominating in these yeah, days. Yeah, I'm this was sorry one about that. We needed to, to, it's, it's just so common. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the other questions into next week. We'll do we'll do a quicker fly through these questions next week. So we have quite a few starting to pile up, which is awesome. Thank you for for sharing your hearts with us and, and how we can how we can guide. That's what this whole show is about. So we've got lots for next week. I want to go through a few of the live comments you guys have left, but before we do, just to wrap up um, the segment today. So so next week will be Q and A day, December twentieth. During our live broadcast, if you want to write this in your calendars, you may have been part of the 2017 planning session I did last year. Um, I did it at the start of January. We're going to do that again for 2018. Uh, I'd love to invite you to join live if you want to. Before we plan 2018 and what we'd like to see happen in our lives and in our businesses, we're going to also spend some time understanding and appreciating 2017. And, and how we were guided. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on some content for you guys to make that the topic. That will be the last show for this year. And uh, if you wanna mark this down, we will be back in the new year, January 17th. We have a couple weeks of travel in the beginning of January. So um, if you wanna mark those dates down, do you want, I wanted to give those to you so you had them. But I, I love reading your comments. I'm so glad that this topic landed for so many of you this is always going to be a step in your business you're going to have to go through these tougher times helping others to see what you feel is possible in your business um so and renee so some questions are flying in renee said even though you are still doing firefighting you must have more time to spend as a family yeah this is one of the this is one of the best parts of that role is it allows we, we've had this, he's been on for almost 20 years and he works two 24 hour shifts a week. So he's always been home five days a week. Something I've loved about his job. Now, if his job pulled him out of our home, you know, five yeah. to six days a week might be a different story. It would right? be a different story for sure. So that's one of the reasons for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tag, tag a friend, tag your boyfriend, tag your husband if he's on Facebook and, and, have them watch this because it's important that we all realize that the, the goal of this work is it will in doTERRA and I'll speak directly to those of you building doTERRA. This business will change your life. It will change your home for the better. It will allow you to have more flexibility with your time, with your finances. It will heal your life and your family's life on many levels. But like any job, you're going to have to go to work for yourself. This is a, 
it's an ugly part of this business where people think this is about making money in 24 hours mm -hmm. and getting rich quick. And it's not, it's not, you're going to need to go to work for yourself. And if you've ever learned to be a good employee of somebody else, you're going to need to honor yourself as your boss. And this is where you're going to lose people is, uh, and this is what I talk about a lot in that it takes a village broadcast. You're going to lose the trust and belief from others in your life. If you continue to show yourself as somebody that they cannot depend on to do what you said you were going to do with your time, you need to be, you need to really honor this as a business. Don't goof around and don't, don't say stupid things like, honey, we're going to be millionaires. That's not what this is about. No. That may come. The people that are earning, you know, seven figures in doTERRA, I'll tell you something there. The goal was never to, to be earning that. That wasn't their why. That is very uninspiring leadership. If what in the world would cause somebody to want to join the work that I do, if all I ever talked about was how I and them could be rich, yeah, it, like ick. And this is out there. This is out there. And this is what a lot of boyfriends, husbands, wives, girlfriends, friends, partners, whatever. This is what a lot of people worry about, especially in this industry, because it has the ability to completely change your life absolutely but we see far too many of the the really low below the line it's, kind of yeah it's such low stories. hanging fruit to go there fruit to go there and, and make it about money and you know it, it's like you, you're right you're bang on what you said there was exactly right i'm not just saying that because i'm your husband so you know what speaking to that right if you if you think that that might be the issue that somebody is worried like well and if you're talking, if, you, if you've said things like that in the past, then maybe you need to take a couple steps back and say, you know what, this is, this is why I really want to do this work. Or, you know, so-and-so, this leader really inspires me around what she's been able to create. And I feel very drawn to do similar work. What do you think? You know, and have those conversations. If yeah. I had said to Chris 10 years ago, I'm going to start um, this, this blog, this website, and I'm going to be famous. I'm going to, I'm going to like, I'm going to be so rich and I'm going to be so famous. If I had said things like that to him, he'd be out, out like right away. And, and, and honestly, we wouldn't be where we are today. If that was my guiding, if that was my North star this whole time, yeah. um, let the success, let the wealth and abundance and everything come as you keep your eyes focused on what's most important, which is serving people with your gifts and let everybody in your house benefit from that as well. All right, I think we're going to wrap. Yeah. So we'll get this uploaded to iTunes. We'll include some links in the show notes if you guys want to go back and check those. I'll include some info on the, the you know, coconut oil gate. And uh, oh, I'll, I'll include a link to that mentor session I did with all the brand new elites on our team this past month. If it interests you, if you want to, if you want to, you know, tune into how I, I like to jam with our leaders and, um, this, I think we'll probably call this show. Yeah, I was thinking about that. What are we going to call it? You think about husbands it. Husbands, listen up. Husbands, listen up. <laughs> and like I said, too, if, uh, if you want, you can, if you didn't get your question answered here, find me on Facebook, ask me the question. I'll definitely get back to you on that because I really do enjoy adding that. He so chats it about once a week, though. That's the only problem. Yeah, but you'll, I will get back to you because mm -hmm. I know that it is a big day. I, and I've always said, too, like, I should do one of these myself just based on that or just have guys come in. Well, you kind of did today. This was the whole topic, yeah. really, today. But, um, it, hey, if you ever, ever want to, like, just run the show, you just let me know. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, you guys. We'll catch you next week. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in.